Hey guys, so I think that understanding what the state of the wish fulfilled means, what that phrase means, is pretty key to understanding what you're trying to do here, the nuanced difference between what you're trying to do here to get what you want versus what you would have done if you never heard about manifestation in the first place. Um, Neville, it's a Neville Goddard term, the state of the wish fulfilled. Living in the state of the wish fulfilled um, is basically what Neville says causes the 3D to rearrange itself and to give you the thing you want without you having to lift a finger. Uh, so the problem is that most people don't, I think, understand what that really means. And you can really boil it down to one phrase that I have my stepfather to thank for this, which, who I'm sure uh, he has Carl Jung or somebody to thank for, which is the phrase detached intention. Um, when Neville says that you're supposed to exist in the state of the wish fulfilled, <clears throat> what he's talking about is putting yourself in the frame of mind that you would be in if you already had the thing that you want. It's not how you would feel at the moment that that thing arrives. It's not how you would feel while you're basking in the afterglow of finally having this thing that you want. So basically, um, if you're manifesting a relationship, you're not, you wouldn't, living in the state of the wish fulfilled would mean you weren't living in the moment where you met the person. It, you wouldn't be living in the honeymoon phase. You would be living in the state where having the relationship you wanted had already been a fulfilled, done deal. And you had moved back in to the state of normal existence. So basically, that thing being a normal thing in your life. And so think about it. It would basically be exactly how you are right now, except for with this thing in your life. So it would actually be probably a very small shift uh, for most things that you're trying to manifest. It, it wouldn't be a big difference. Um, it would basically be how you are now, except what? You wouldn't be thinking about this thing anymore. You would just have it. Um, and I know it can be tricky to try to figure out what that feels like, but I can tell you uh, my big secret, and I've talked about this recently and I talk about it all the time, but the easiest way for me to mimic the feeling of the wish fulfilled is to find a way to stop caring if you have that thing. Because, you know, um, when you're in the state of already having something, you don't not care that you have it, but you don't think about it all the time. It's just not something that you worry about. It's probably, you know, unless you have a lot of anxiety or you're that type of personality, it's probably not something you sit around worrying about losing all the time. Um, and it's very similar to the feeling of being completely fine without having it at all. You know, the thing that you think you want, you think is going to have this huge impact on your life. Uh, often it does not have the level of impact that you think it will. You're basically just you all the time. You think you're going to get these things that are going to change how you feel all day, every day. Uh, that is an illusion. You basically feel how you feel right now all the time, even when you start getting more stuff, whatever your baseline mental state is based on your self-concept, uh, you're basically gonna be sitting around in that state all the time, no matter what 3D thing you get. Um, I can tell you this from personal experience, having made a huge change in my financial bottom line, having gone from being single to uh, almost married now, I'm, I'm engaged, um, having gone from being uh, obese, like uncomfortably obese to very thin. The state of mind is, it's just a minor shift brought about by even huge changes. Um, really, it's, it's remarkable how little outside things actually change anything uh, for how you're existing and experiencing the world. The things in my experience that have ended up making the most major changes to how I feel when I'm just sitting here. Uh, when I'm sitting at a stoplight, the things that have made the biggest difference uh, for that, the only things that have made a real difference um, are the changes that I've made in my self-concept, meaning the, the changes that I've made in my beliefs about everything, about what this is all about, about, you know, my own value and my own worth and my own place in this whole thing. Those are the things that have actually changed my level of peace and happiness overall. It, it hasn't been the things. You know, obviously, getting enough money to a certain point removed 
most money worries for me. It didn't have the same impact on my business partner who shares the exact same financial status that I do. Um, for me, all that did was just take away any thoughts about survival um, because that's that was the, the outer effect it produced for my personal self-concept. For my ex whose self-concept has different beliefs about money, different beliefs about his own self-worth, it didn't have the same impact on him. It's really the, it's really the self-concept that determines how you experience everything, not the 3D things. Um, even something as big as changing my body from, you know, in a major transformative way, even that only shifted things slightly and in, and in a similar way to money. It, it made me feel um, like I didn't have to worry about certain things anymore, like buying clothes or getting dressed or feeling like I didn't look right when I was out in public. Most of the time, it was still just me sitting there. Um, and the the issues that I had with my self-concept relating to worth and appearance and all of that stuff did not change when my appearance changed. Uh, they were still there. Those were the things that I had to work on and change outside of manipulating 3D, manifesting different things in 3D um, in order to have any greater happiness or joy or peace. So basically, living in the state of the wish fulfilled is basically, um, it, it's almost identical to not even wanting the thing. That's why this is a trick that I think works and you, you, you see people talking about this all the time, everywhere. As soon as I stopped caring, I got the thing. Uh, and that's because there is something about not caring that mimics almost exactly the state of having it, um, for back of, lack of a better word. Being okay is how you, you know, it's, it's basically the state that you're in, whether you have it or whether you're in the state of the wish fulfilled. It's, it's the same thing. Being okay without it is the same type of vibe. Um, so you can use this, you can use this to get what you want because you can almost always find a way to figure out how to not care about having something. And, and here's the thing, if you don't do that, you're probably not gonna get into the state that creates it. And eventually you're gonna give up on it anyway because you're not getting it because you're not in the right state. And then you're gonna not care anyway. So you might as well just do it right now. You might as well just figure out how to not care about it right now before you're forced to do it later. It's like, do you wanna to go to the dentist and get your teeth clean now? Or do you wanna wait until you have a cavity and then you gotta to go to the dentist anyway? And then it's, you know, it's more painful. You're forced to do it. You don't get to pick the timing. It's the same thing with any of this stuff that you're attached to. You can either figure out how to get into this state where it it doesn't even matter, you don't even think about it, which is where it will come about, or you can get to the point through frustration and failure where you finally just say, screw it, I don't care anymore. Um, being forced to do that just um, for self-preservation and sanity. Either way, you're gonna end up in the same place. If you still have the intention to get that thing at that point, that is when it will come about. Uh, we've all experienced this. I've experienced this so many times. Uh, just getting to the point where you're not giving a shit about the thing that you want, but there's still an intention. That is when it shows up um, miraculously and so often that it can't be a mistake. So um, I hope that helps somebody. Uh, I'm not sure there's really anything else to say about it other than don't mistake the feeling of the wish fulfilled for the feeling of the moment of wish fulfillment. It's not an exciting thing. It's a state that you take on and live with all the time of not even caring about it, not even thinking about it. It's like when I was manifesting Matt, my fiance, during that period of time between the intention and when I was able to get to the point where it was the right time to have the relationship with him, I had other things in the meantime that I had to take care of. And when those things were resolved instantly, there he was, we were in a relationship, there was no bullshit, there was nothing um, else that had to happen. And that whole period of time was exactly what I would describe as detached intention. And the detachment basically translates to not thinking about it, not worrying about it, not missing it, not, you know, freaking out about it, not reading 
a whole bunch of meaning into things in your life that are happening in relation to it. It's like it's already done. That's the thing. It's done. It's, it's off your mind, but the intention to have it is still there and ever present. Um, that's the formula uh, for the state of the wish fulfilled, which will auto create what you want uh, in ways that are unknowable that I can't explain. So have a great day.